Today is about what to do when you crave. And I'm just gonna tell you a quick analogy that relates to my struggles overcoming marijuana. So marijuana and food addiction and food cravings are very similar, they are different, but how you deal with cravings just in general, it goes the same. It goes, it's basically the same, whether it's shopping, marijuana, food, alcohol, gambling, whatever. And the beautiful thing about the answer, the answer is self-care, is that this is also how you prevent it, or at least it's a huge part in how you prevent it. So let's get into today's content. If you do like this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up or this podcast episode, leave it a thumbs up, really appreciate it. Send a comment, let me know your thoughts. All right, let's get into it. So I said self-care is both the cure and part of the reason how you prevent it. Let's go into the cure first. What do I mean by this practically, self-care? When we think about taking care of yourself, what, what comes to mind for you and what associations do you have with it? Most people poo-poo self-care. They say, I don't have time, it's not effective enough, it doesn't give me good enough results. They dismiss it. Now, if we really want to understand food cravings and the cure to food cravings, self-care is one of the most important tips. And here's all you have to do. When you get a food craving, you have to sit with it for 10 minutes, five minutes even. You have to bring mindfulness. This way of taking care of yourself needs to be a lifestyle. It need, I know that's a popular word these days, but if you look at all your role models in life, people, who, they take care of themselves. Self-care is not something you dismiss. So it's about mindfulness and self-care. And when you have a craving, you need to pause and get your mindfulness back. And what will happen is maybe half the time. Maybe in the beginning it is unbearable, actually, to not give into a craving. You have a craving and it's really, really tough to not get that food, to not reach out. And for me with weed, I would have a craving with weed. And what I learned, and this helped me ultimately let go of the habit or at least make peace with it, is um, when that craving comes up, you got to... First, you gotta, you, gotta get, you gotta get honest with yourself. Like for me, I'd, I would have a craving for marijuana and I have to get honest with myself. Am I lonely? Am I stressed? Am I bored? Am I, what am I feeling? And 10 minutes, give it 10 minutes. If you still want it after 10 minutes, give yourself permission to mindfully enjoy that thing you want. And the key thing is mindfully, because if you judge yourself or shame yourself or think that you shouldn't be having this food craving, you're gonna disconnect from your experience. And I just made a video recently about how disconnection actually fuels cravings. So when you're binge eating or whatever you're doing and you're disconnecting, you're, you're not even paying attention to it, you're just on automatic pilot, that's actually fueling more cravings. If you're mindful, you're gonna notice a couple things. One, after 20 or so bites, maybe, if you're actually tasting the food, because oftentimes you might only taste the first bite, the first two bites. I remember back when I was a wrestler, I would eat like so rapidly, but I wasn't, it wasn't like I was tasting the food. It was like I'd be starving from weight loss from a tournament and I'd just gobble down everything. And this gobbling down, I wasn't tasting anything. So if you actually are mindful and taste the food and give yourself permission to have as much as you want, but taste it, don't disconnect. I know that's tough, but we're talking about the cure to food cravings. And what's gonna happen as you do this is that you'll realize some of the time, some of the time you're gonna realize, damn, I don't even want this food. Damn, this isn't satisfying me. Like, you're gonna be like, ah, I don't even want this food. Or it's not as good as I thought. That's very common. Now, I'm not gonna say that's gonna be all the time that that's gonna happen. Another time, uh, you know, it's not like I just started practicing mindfulness with weed and my weed addiction went away overnight. No, um, it took a long time. And I had to learn other aspects of self-care, like sleep, getting better relationships, drawing boundaries. Um, those were big ones for me. Um, and, and also giving myself permission to, to smoke weed when I wanted to 
and not guilt tripping myself and doing it mindfully. And when you do that, I'm telling you, it, it, it makes weed no longer craving. <coughs> it's kind of boring actually. Cause, cause you know, you smoke weed mindfully and you're like, ah, like, yeah, that was, that was all right. You know, whatever. But you're mindful during the whole experience. When I wasn't mindful with it, I would zone out. And my zoning out would then allow my, once I was done being high, I, my mind could then fantasize what it was like to be high. Because the mind didn't really know what it was like to be high. It was zoned out. So then when the, the weed went down, when, I, when, I, when the weed went off, the mind would fantasize about it again. But if I actually stayed mindful through the whole experience, and, and didn't judge myself, and then, I, then it'd be like, ah, this is lame. Ah, like this is lame. And you get enough of those experiences, those with weed or, or, or with food. And eventually, the, 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 it's, like a, it's like a scale, right? We have, it's like a, a mindful experience on one side versus a disconnected experience on the other side. And, and we're, we're rewiring our brain to experience food and, and whatever you're addicted to differently. And it takes, it takes like you're putting a rock on a scale and it takes like a bunch of rocks to kind of tilt the scales more permanently. But this, this is the practice. Practice self-care in the moment. This is how you do it. And paradoxically, or not even paradoxically, this is how you avoid it as well. Um, like I said earlier, sleep. You know, I'm, I'm no longer in the throes of a weed addiction or even food for that matter too. It's been so long since I've struggled with food. Um, but back then with weed, I remember I got over food before I got over weed. So I actually, with food, I didn't really work on my sleep. For me, weed was harder to get over than food. And I did have to work on my sleep. And I would notice if I didn't sleep well, damn, my cravings for weed were off the charts. If I slept well, it, I, 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 the cravings were way lower. And, you know, I know oftentimes we say we don't have sleep or we don't have time for self-care. And, and, and that's bullcrap. That's bullcrap. I gotta say that. There's probably a better way of saying that without, because maybe you, you really are busy, but, but I guarantee you, there's someone out there, like let's say, I don't, I, I'm just gonna use a stereotypical example, but like uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, I bet they're busy as heck, and I bet they take time to care for themselves. We need to internalize that we're gonna get more time, we're gonna be more productive, we're gonna be our relationships and our life is gonna go better if we take time to care for ourselves. The question is, what are you doing that's not self-care? Like if we're honest about how much time we spend on TV, if we're honest you know, about how much time we spend on social media, for me it's YouTube and, and news and I've had to get a lot more clear on that, uh, you know, admitting to myself, wow, I could be doing time for self-care, but I'm not, I'm wasting time. I'm doing something that's just zoning out. And so, you know, you do have time to self-care. You have to love yourself. This is what this is about. You know, we, we aren't gonna be able to really see the true motivation of this unless we frame it in terms of loving ourselves. Self-care is loving yourself. You wanna love yourself, trust me, you do. And you know you wanna love yourself. So love yourself with self-care during a binge and before a binge. Leave me a comment, have a great day, peace.